the personality disorder classification, one of the really big differences between DSM-5 and ICD-11 is going to be in the way personality disorders are classified. For DSM-5, there was an attempt to move to a dimensional approach uh, for a DSM-5 to get rid of the categorical approaches, which is what you could actually see on the slide. What happened was, is after the DSM-5 process ended, uh, this proposal to have a dimensional approach ultimately was not approved by the APA, the DSM-5 task force, which was the uh, group, uh, it's actually by the board of trustees, uh, which had to do the final approval. They decided that uh, the system that was proposed for DSM-5 was too complicated and that they wanted to continue with the categorical approach. ICD-11, on the other hand, made the decision to get rid of the categories for personality disorder. The ICD-10 personality disorder categories weren't exactly the same as the DSM ones, but they were pretty close. As you can see for ICD-11, it's really quite a different approach. So you first make a diagnosis of whether the person has a personality disorder, and there's a definition of what does it mean to have a personality disorder, and three levels of severity are uh, given, so mild, moderate, or severe. And then there's this category actually called personality difficulty, which is not actually a personality disorder, but it's a category reserved for people where their personality is creating some sort of difficulty in life, but not severe enough to consider it a disorder. But ICD-11, in addition to these three levels of severity, has trait domains. So this is the dimensional approach, which is a simplified version of what the DSM-5 work group had originally proposed. So basically, there are five trait domains. And what you do is you give the level of severity, like mild personality disorder or modern personality disorder, and then you indicate which of the five are present or absent. It could be and all of them or none of them. And the five categories are negative, prominent features of negative affectivity, prominent to social features, prominent features of disinhibition, prominent anencastic features, and prominent features of detachment. And there's a, as you can see from those five uh, dimensions, the personality disorders in the DSM-5 could be mapped onto those five dimensions. So something like borderline is going to be uh, uh, probably a moderate to severe personality disorder with prominent features of negative affectivity and disinhibition would cover the, most of the presentations of a borderline personality.